to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Make up your mind that you will refine your gift. Make up your mind that you will insist until you rise to the zenith of your profession, of your ministry. And value is divided into two. Number one is virtue. And number two, your transactable skill. There are many people who have skill, but lack the requisite level of character that sustains that gift. A gifted man who is an angry man, it's not an asset because your anger will sabotage the rewards that your being gifted should bring. So you need a balance of virtue and value. Are we together? Very quickly, the fourth key that is responsible for the advancement of men in this kingdom it's a key that has ministered to me so personally is the key a key that i so jealously guard a revelation that changed my life is called the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers hmm. the irrefutable ministry The last time I was with you, Liberty Church in London, I shared a bit about destiny helpers. And I just want to buttress on it again. That it takes a synergy of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of men for men to rise. The formula is this. The spirit and the bride say come. The spirit alone cannot make the word flesh. The bride alone cannot make the word flesh. It is always the spirit and the bride. So if the spirit says be healed, there must be a bride on earth that agrees with the spirit to say be healed for that word to come. If the spirit says be lifted, there must be a bride on earth to say be lifted for lifting to happen. We have this narrative that men are not useful and sometimes even as preachers we make that mistake we downplay the ministry of men if you say men are not useful as contrasting them to the power and the sovereignty of God then you are right but if you say men are not useful as far as the dynamics of advancement and excellence is concerned you are very wrong forever O oh lord the bible says thy word is settled in heaven not on earth it takes a synergy of the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of men for the word to be settled in our lives i wish i had time to show you scripture after scripture where men interrupted the program of god god intended the first man to interrupt the program of god was adam himself man has that level of power to interrupt the program of god as mighty as god is as powerful as god is man's disobedience he used his will and interrupted god's program and god respected his will please do not downplay men the narrative that men are not useful if god wants to bless me all i need is god is a very very comforting scripture but it's destructive it's a destructive statement you need men. This is the world of men. To the point that God had to become a man. 
the angel came to ask for permission the bible says a virgin shall conceive the bible never said her name would be mary so the spirit of god kept hovering around the earth looking for which virgin will yield her womb for that prophecy to come to pass when he came to mary mary said be it unto me if mary refused the holy ghost would continue his search until he would find another virgin who would afford her womb to bring jesus men are important unbelievers understand this but believers downplay the ministry of men to our detriment as powerful as the gospel is it takes a man to get it to the unsaved men are very important so important that not even an encounter with jesus will replace the ministry of men paul as saul on his way to damascus when he had an encounter with the lord jesus christ you would think that after an encounter with the lord jesus christ he would not need any man again it was the spirit of god that referred him to go to ananias so that the ministry would continue there you need men you need men let me drum it in the name of jesus liberty church europe and the entire globe you need the ministry of men in fact the ministry of men is the highest confirmation that the favor of god is upon you the real proof of favor is not money the real proof of favor is the loyalty of men when god gives you men you truly are favored the Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor, not the multitude of resources. I learned this and it changed my life. Destiny help us. Who are they? Destiny help us are men and women anointed, appointed and sent to participate in your lifting, in your rising, in your exaltation men and women anointed men and women sent very very powerful let's look at two scriptures the bible says in the book of mark give us mark chapter 2 very interesting narrative mark chapter 2 from verse 1 watch this the bible says and again jesus now he entered into capernaum after some days and it was noised abroad that he was in the house so news went everywhere follow this scripture carefully the bible says and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the door and he preached the word unto them next verse watch this now the bible says and they came unto him certain men bringing one who was sick of palsy which was born of four verse four and when they could not come nigh unto him now watch this this was a man who was paralyzed he knew that jesus was available he knew the healing power of jesus was there but there was no man to help him finally the favor of God came on him and he found certain men. Watch this. The Bible says they were trying to press for the crowd. This is the thing about destiny helpers. They never stop until prophecy manifests in your life. Destiny helpers are not just mere supporters of your life. They have been instructed by God. They have been anointed to stay until the word of God comes through in your life when they could not come nigh to him for the press they uncovered the roof where he was and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay now you would think that jesus did not want to heal that man you would think jesus did not want to lift that man that man would have remained like that all through the earth work of jesus but for the ministry of men they carried him and said today you must walk we know someone who has the power we will pay the price do you know what it means to uncover someone's roof imagine the court cases they 
after that crusade and they defied it they said whatever we will go through let us go through it but you must be lifted let me speak over someone in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God in this season I call forth the helpers of your destiny men and women anointed commissioned sent to you to lift your hands until the glory of the Lord rises upon your life in experience in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the spirit of the Lord is blessing you right now Liberty Church but it took a man your pastor Dr. Shola it took his yieldedness and his alignment for these to happen men are important listen to me this is the world of men the Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord but the earth has he given to the sons of men I believe in the ministry of men Jesus is on his way to Golgotha and prophecy says he should die on a tree I hope you realize that if Jesus died on the ground there would be no salvation for men because the law is that he had to become a cause and the only way he would become a cause is that he hangs on a tree not on the ground Jesus was weak bleeding all over from the whips and the Bible tells us that he fell to the ground, had no energy to carry the cross. And a man came called Simon the nigger. He came and helped Jesus to carry that cross and made salvation possible. That body was hanging on the tree dead. And yet there was no man to bring him from that cross. It took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea to use his influence and his virgin tomb. If Jesus were not buried in a grave, we, could, we cannot say today, O oh grave, where is your victory? O oh death, where is your sting? It took a man to donate his grave and use his influence to bring the body of the King of Kings from the cross. Have you downplayed men in your life? In a bid to show spirituality, have you ignored the ministry of men? All blessings, you hear me say, come from God through men to men. Write it down. All blessings come from God through men to men. There is nothing that comes from God directly to man. If it looks like it came directly from God, I tell you there was an intercessor somewhere that you may not see. All blessings come from God through men to men all tragedies come from Satan through men to men so whether it is negative or positive men will always play a role I believe in the ministry of men my life has changed because I have been given the grace to discern now very quickly give me two minutes let me walk you through I know it's a miracle service we're about to pray but give me two minutes and let me walk you through the four categories of destiny helpers we may not have the time to go through scriptures forgive me I'm sure that another time we would be able to deal with that but there are four categories of destiny helpers that must show up in your life number one they are called divine connectors divine connectors do not have the ability to solve your problem but they know who has that power to solve your problem an example we find that in second kings chapter 5 just write it for reference the bible talks about naaman who was the captain of the syrian army he said he was a valiant man in war but he was leprous and then one time they caught a slave girl and the slave girl ministered to his wife and one day she looked at him and said oh my dear boss if you would hearken to me there is a prophet i know who will cure you of this leprosy cut the long story short from the ministry of that little girl naman was healed from his leprosy divine connectors the key to receiving from divine connectors is discernment because usually they will come in a form that is not receivable they may be children they may be unintelligent people it may be your house help it may be someone who every day talks like an unwise person except that for that day the spirit of god was upon that person it takes discernment 
to receive from divine connectors. Number two, very quickly, the second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence. There are times you don't need divine connectors. You need the men who have the substance, the access, the track record and the endorsement. Men of influence are very powerful. Why are they powerful? They have the resources. They have the credibility. They have paid the price. The city has opened up to them. One man of influence can give a recommendation, an endorsement about your life, your ministry, your business, and up you go, never to return again. It was the king that sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. And in a moment, he became a prime minister. Let me tell you this, in this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. A man falls in love with a village girl called Hadassah and she becomes queen almost immediately. A man looks at a woman called Vashti and rejects her and she's banished from the palace never to be mentioned again. Men are very important. It took the influence of Joseph of Arimathea to bring down the body of Jesus. You need to pray for men of influence. Pastors, we live in very trying times. We need men of influence. We need men who have influence in security. Men who have influence in, in the ministry of justice. Men who have influence at strategic governmental positions. Who can stand and help us fulfill this call. It takes more than an anointing. You need men of influence. Hallelujah. Number three, the third category of destiny helpers that we need, they are called gifted people. Sometimes you just need skilled people to be part of your team and then you find out that you excel effortlessly. Gifted people. Some of the top corporations around the world, they do not have a very huge staff structure but they have exceptional people and they produce unbelievable results. You must pray that God send me gifted people, send me gifted people, skilled people in my life. Number four, very quickly, the last set of destiny helpers that everyone would need, must need in his life. They are called burden bearers. These ones are not there to help you move forward. They are there to stop you from going backward. Burden bearers. You do not just need people who move you forward alone. You need people who can stop you from going backward. Because there are times that the journey to destiny can be so hard. You need Joseph of Arimathea. You need Roots who will tell Naomi, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. They are not looking for your gifts. Divine connectors are not even interested in the anointing. You are the object of their passion, not your gift, not your skill, not what you can do or what you cannot do. They are not people who will stand with you. They are those who will die with you. Those are divine connectors. Let me tell you this. Woe betides any leader and woe betides any man that cannot have destiny helpers called divine, called burden bearers in your life. A time came when David was running away from Saul because Saul was in desperate pursuit to kill him. And the Bible says certain men came to him in the cave of Adullam. They saw a man hiding and yet they covenanted with themselves that our assignment is to take this fear from your life and insist that you become a king till you rule over us. Why would you want a timid young boy to rule over you? That's what happens when you find burden bearers. They will stand by you stand for you they will stand with you they will cry with you they will laugh with you they will die with you i will search for you and i will find you i will find you with all my heart i will lift my voice to you in worship and i will worship with all my heart I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart I will lift my voice to you in worship and 
I will worship with all my heart. Lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray. Lord, send destiny helpers to my life. Please pray. Send the helpers of destiny. Send them to my ministry. Divine connectors connecting me to my helpers. Men of influence using their credibility and their endorsements to lift me. Gifted people making things happen in my life. And then burden bearers giving me the support that I need to continue. Send them, oh God, to my life. Go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. One more and then we'll pray very quickly. This will be the last key. The last key that is responsible for the advancement of men and women in this kingdom is called the prophetic. The prophetic advantage. Hmm. The prophetic advantage. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. The Bible says, and by a prophet, it was the Lord that brought Israel, but he used a prophet. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. The prophetic has been largely abused, especially in our modern day context of charismatic and Pentecostal Christianity. We've had all kinds of excesses that surround the prophetic. However, it would be an error and grave neglect to ignore the ministry of the prophetic in actualizing destiny. The prophetic has always played a role in the lifting, the mysterious lifting of men and women. I am a product of prophecy. This ministry is a product of prophecy. The Liberty Church is a product of prophecy. Your pastor, among many factors, is a product of prophecy. Jesus, he's coming to the earth. He's excelling in his earth work. The completion of his assignment was prophecy dependent. When Jesus was born, before he was taken anywhere, he was taken to the temple and he met two prophets. One called Simeon, the prophet. The other called Anna, the prophetess. He had to encounter these prophets. Then before his ministry would start, he met this strange prophet called John the Baptist who baptized him and announced him. You need the prophetic in your life. There has to be the speaking of a prophet sent. Now watch this. Let me tell you how the prophetic works. Prophets, just like apostles, are sent to you. Just because a prophetic anointing is available does not mean it can bless you or respond to your situation. There are words that are sent. When he sends forth his word, it can heal it can deliver. It can bring breakthrough. The Bible says there were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. Can you imagine this? This is Elijah on his way to the widow's house and he met other widows. How are Saul was searching for his father's donkey and he searched and searched and searched and could not find it and then they made up their mind to go to the prophet of God called Samuel amazing what happened when they met Samuel as soon as they had a face-to-face -face encounter the donkey started going back home there was no mention that look the prophetic is powerful it can cheapen a challenge of decades in a moment the prophetic when administered within the jurisdiction of balance and scripture it can work wonders a life can change overnight and someone's life is about to change this night because i'm going to be speaking over your life 
There are two dimensions to the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. And the goal is to build your faith, to give you insight about happenings, past, present, and future. So if I prophesy and I begin to call names, for instance, and call conditions, you see, those are dimensions, that they are revelatory dimensions of the prophetic. But the most superior dimension of the prophetic is called the creative dimension of the prophetic. It doesn't just inform you about what is there that you do not know. It makes what has no business happening to happen. An example of the creative dimension of the prophetic is found in 2 Kings when you read chapter 6. But for time's sake, let's start with Seven, Second Kings 7. This was a famine in Samaria. And the Bible says it was so grave that women began to eat their children. And when the king heard about it, he tore his clothes. He was sad. And then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flying fowl be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Watch this. This is These are a people who do not even have food, eating their children. All of a sudden, a prophet shows up and says, by this time tomorrow. He was not giving them advanced knowledge of what will happen. It was the word he said that created that possibility. There are times I can tell you, okay, there is your car is outside. That's revelation. I didn't create the car. Whether I prophesied it or not, the car was there anyway. But I can look at you and say, go back home and meet favor waiting for you. Favor had no business waiting for you. But you see, when the creative dimension of the prophetic is released, the dynamics is that the spirit of wisdom begins to hover around a territory, searching for the human actors that must make that word come to pass. This is how the prophetic works. That means someone who is sitting and watching now. That means someone who is following in your home that in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, something that was a challenge, all of a sudden is rolled away by the power of the prophetic. Mm. I will go back, can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. I won't go back, can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. Prophet Elisha was mentoring a group of people and the Bible says they told him where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. And while they were felling the woods that they would use to build a place of lecture the bible says an axe head fell and someone cried immediately he said alas master for it was borrowed elisha came and said there's no cause for concern he threw a stick and the axe head floated when it is time to receive the prophetic word please receive with all your heart don't sit wondering can god make a way in the wilderness uh -uh. He upholds all things by the power of his word. Let me tell you, prophecy is powerful. The way it works is that it will keep hovering around that territory until it finds human vessels that can partner with the divine to make that word come to pass. I am a product of prophecy. I remember, you may have heard me say it, but years ago, I went to buy something just living my life very simple life and then I saw two women who were trying to make their purchases and all of that and then I told them I said please would you are my mothers would you allow me to pay for you it was not much I'm not sure in it, it, it would not be more than more than one pound in fact it was less than one pound or one euro and I said let me pay and I paid and they began to bless me. You know how mothers bless when they are touched. They began to bless me, bless me. And for some reason, I didn't pay attention to what they were saying. But one of them spoke to me and said, My son, forever walk upon gold. 
I'm a product of prophecy. Your life can change overnight when a sent word comes to you. We're about to pray. I have to stop here. I'm going to be ministering to the sick. I believe in the healing power of Jesus. I'm going to be ministering deliverance to the oppressed. And then I'm going to speak and prophesy from the depth of my heart over the Liberty Church, over your lives. And I'm truly honored by the way. Pastor, thank you for the honor that you have for me. Thank you so much. Um, I heard your, your compliments before I came on air and I was just broken listening to you. I appreciate the grace and I appreciate the warm gesture and the discernment. It's an honor to be a carrier of this unique grace that God has given to bless nations. And I only pray that people will have the discernment to believe and to receive. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata bako tosko kopre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.